Welcome to the Deck Diaries. In this series, I will share with you my personal experiences with the decks in my collection. Hello, it's Don Michelle from Boho Tarot, and today I'm going to share with you how I work with the Tarot de Saint Croix. When it comes to the Tarot de Saint Croix, I have found that there really is no one purpose for this deck because this deck for me works really well for anything that I throw at it. Um, for me, this deck really is kind of a reflection of myself and how I see the world. And that's, I think, one of the reasons why I love to work with this deck and why I work with it so frequently. Because for me, this deck actually reflects my vision or my view of the world in a really succinct way. It's the deck that probably closest matches my own vision for the tarot. And so for me, it's actually quite a personal deck. And it's one that I use for a lot of really personal readings. And although we don't necessarily always see it represented in my tarot journal, and um, I, it's not one that I show every month, it is one that I do use pretty consistently every month. And so it's one that I definitely wanted to spend some time speaking about in this deck diary series because it is one that is a staple in my collection. It is one that I use quite frequently. One that I use for those really deep personal readings because for me, this deck really reflects how I see the tarot, how I see the world. Because this deck is very much a journey that the creator herself has taken, it is her real life reflected in the tarot. I think that in part does allow me to make a pretty personal connection with this deck on my own. Every card in this deck has some sort of personal significance for me. Now, part of that comes from the deep work that I've done with the deck. Part of that comes from the messages that I've read in the guidebook. And the majority of it comes from the way I actually work with this deck. Now, the way I work with a deck is usually inspired by the deck itself. And because this deck is a reflection of the creator's personal journey, I often use this deck as a way to reflect on my own personal journey. And so the spreads that I primarily use this deck for and the way I primarily use this deck is one of exploring my personal path. So before I share with you a couple of the spreads that I use to actually help me cultivate my personal path and um, work with this deck in that way. I wanted to pull out a couple of cards that really showed how I actually use this deck. So the three cards that I pulled out really kind of encapsulate my own personal path. And this is a card not only of going into the cave and spending that time in introspection and diving deep and learning more about self, but also the card that reminds us that we need to come back out and actually apply that in our real lives. And for me, that idea is represented here in the Nine of Wands, where we have this figure that has come down the path. She's passed through all of these different challenges and she's still continuing on her path. So we have the hermit that goes into the cave. We learn, dive deep into introspection and we use that knowledge and put it into practice as we walk our path. Then we get to the Wheel of Fortune here, which is a card for me about diving deep into the subconscious, which allows us to rise up to the higher self. And this represents a cycle. So for me, this card represents the whole cycle of diving deep, going into the cave, learning more and being, spending that time in introspection, coming back out again and using that knowledge to walk our path and repeating the process. So for me, it really shows how this whole process of exploring self, of walking your personal path is not really a long straight path. It's more of a circle. It goes around and around, or you could think of it as a labyrinth, always circling inward more towards your authentic self. And that's kind of how I see it. And these three cards really kind of represent or sum up for me how this deck helps me to continue to do that on my path. It helps me to discover where I need to go, what I need to work on in the cave. It helps me to manifest that in the outside world so that I can actually put it into practice as I walk my path. And it reminds me that I need to keep doing that cycle and keep moving forward along the way. The Nine of Wands here also reminds me not to get stuck in that cycle, that each time I come through, I need to move further down my path. Every time I come out, I learn something new, I pass a new challenge, and I keep going on along my journey. So I love these three cards because they really sum up for me this idea of how I use this deck to help me walk my personal path. 
So there are three main spreads that I use with this deck. The first one is inspired by these three cards, which I talked about how they reflect my personal journey. I have another spread that I've created using the Four of Wands as the inspiration. And then I have another basic three card layout that I do quite often with this deck as well. And that's one that I've actually posted on Instagram as well. So let's go ahead and give these cards a shuffle. Um, while I am shuffling it, I do want to quickly talk about the orange borders on this deck. Um, when I bought this deck, I originally intended to trim the orange borders off. That was always my intention for this deck was to just take it down to the artwork. Um, and I just didn't ever get around to it. And the more that I have used it, the more that I have worked with it, the orange borders do feel like a part of the deck now. They feel like they lend themselves to the energy of the deck, and I feel like it wouldn't be the Tarot de St. Croix without them. So they're staying. I don't have any intentions anymore of actually modifying this deck other than probably edging the um, deck in maybe an orange color. But for me, these borders feel like they're a part of the deck now. And like I said, it wouldn't feel like the Tarot de St. Croix without them. So just a quick note about that. This deck does shuffle really well, and um, I think it's got a great card stock. It's thin and flexible, but holds up really well, and I've used it quite a bit. So the first spread that I want to share with you is my signpost spread. And this is the spread that I use whenever I feel like I've sort of lost my way, whenever I'm a little unsure about where I am on my path or what I need to be working on now. So in the first position, we have what is being asked of me at this time. So this is really about um, what lessons do I need to learn? Where am I headed? What do I need to, to do moving forward? And again, this all relates to walking my personal path, right? How I, how I express myself in the world, how I learn to be a better me. So in the second position, we have, why am I being called to this now? So this is telling me why this lesson or this journey is important to take right this moment. Um, because our path, like I said, it's always, it's always changing. It's always cycling around. And so what we need to learn five days ago may be different than what we need to learn today. Certainly what we needed to learn five years ago is different than what we needed to learn today. So this card is all about why we're being called to this now. So position number three is what challenge will I face? So I'm being called to work on this aspect of myself. I'm being called to work on this aspect of myself at this time because, and what challenges I'm going to face as I work through this. Position number four is what, what new wisdom will this bring? So as I'm going through this process, this is the wisdom that I'm going to gain from facing this new challenge. And then position number five is how can I best integrate this into my life? So if we think of this in terms of the three cards that actually inspired this reading, we have, we're going to go into the cave, right? We're going to do the hermit thing and we're going to learn these lessons. What do we need to be working on while we're in the cave? Then we're going to come out of the cave and learn how can we apply this in our real life? What challenges are we going to come up across as we face this? And what lessons are we going to learn? And what wisdom will that bring? And then the final card kind of speaks to that, that cycle, that wheel card, which is funny because we have the moon here. But so how can I actually take this lesson here that I've learned and actually apply that in my real life? So for me, this is a really great one that I tend to use um, every so often. It's not a, a, a spread that I do all the time, but it's definitely a spread that I turn to whenever I feel like I've lost my way. So another spread that I want to share with you is the crossroads spread. And this spread is actually inspired by the artwork in the four of wands. So when I do this spread, I pull the four of wands out and I let it lend its energy to the reading and I use it as a basis for the energy for the reading itself. And so for this particular reading, generally what I'm looking at when I'm doing my crossroads spread is usually I have a decision to make or I have, um, different aspects of a situation that I need to take a look at. And for this, I look at the three different pathways that we have here in the cards. So I will lay a card down for each of the pathways. 
And that gives me an idea of what is going on within each of these paths or decisions or whatever it is that I might be trying to determine which way to go. Um, this reading is largely based on context, so it really depends on what each of these positions mean to you. Are they three different choices that you need to make? Are they three different aspects of a path that you're thinking about taking? Are they literally three different paths that you might have available to you right now that you need to make a decision on? And so it is largely dependent on what you assign each of these three positions for. And I do tend to really solidify what those mean to me before I move any further with this reading. So this reading is one that kind of keeps building upon itself. So here I am, I'm at the crossroads and let's say I have a decision to make, right? And I have three different options for my decision. If you only had two, you would just maybe not include this card above, you know, it's a, this or this. But generally when we're looking at, you know, paths and decisions, we tend to have, you know, sometimes two or three different options available to us. So let's say that I have a decision that I need to make and I have three different options for this decision, three different ways that I could go about it. So I might look at each of these three and think, well, I'm looking at and I'm seeing right here, the Ace of Wands to me jumps out as being, this is the path that I need to take. That's the path that it's alive, it's bright, it's burning, it's ready to go. So sometimes I'm looking at this and I'm like, yep, that's that's the way I'm gonna go and that's the decision I'm gonna make. So I'm gonna go down the Ace of Wands path. That's the decision I'm gonna make. So I might lay three cards to see how this decision is going to you know, maybe affect me or what I'm going to learn or maybe the challenges that I might face. You can assign three more positions if you'd really like to. Um, you know, maybe this is the, the challenge that I'm going to face and the what I'm going to learn and how it's going to change things. Um, and so maybe I'm looking at this and I'm going, okay, that's a lot of energy going on here. We have two majors and a five. For me, that's that's a lot of energy going on on this side of the reading. So maybe now I'm not quite so sure about this Ace of Wands decision here. So maybe at this point I might go ahead and pull three cards for this Three of Swords decision. So maybe I take the path of healing instead and what's that going to lead to? And so we can see here that it's going to lead to, you know, a lot of pentacle energy and then a tower. So real big shakeup, right? And so this kind of allows me to really sit with, with my different ideas, my different decisions, my different paths, and really explore them in detail. I definitely recommend journaling for this because this does have a potential to be a really large spread. If we were to, you know, explore the path of judgment, we might lay three more cards. Um, perhaps you want to know all the aspects of all the paths from the get-go. So maybe you lay all the cards with each of the paths and then their individual branches off right from the get-go. And so this is a wonderful one that I like to use when I'm kind of contemplating bigger decisions. This isn't really something that I use for like, what am I gonna make for dinner tonight? You know, are, are we gonna have barbecue? Or are we gonna go out to eat? Or are we gonna just everybody fend for themselves? Um, I don't use it for that kind of readings. This is a, a spread that I use when I have bigger decisions that I want to make, um, bigger paths that I'm looking at taking. And so this one is one that I tend to sit with uh, for quite a while. It's one that I tend to journal about. And it's also one that I tend to come back to um, before I've really solidified. So I might leave some time in between before laying the spread and then actually going about the process of picking a path and walking down it. And if I have the time, sometimes I like to sit with it. I like to leave it for however long I can, then come back to it and look at these options again. And this is just one that I, that I like to use to help me navigate the path. So the final spread that I wanna share with you is actually um, a spread that I've shared on Instagram as well. And it is the Illuminated Path spread, but it was definitely inspired by this deck. And I use that, I use this spread quite frequently when I'm not necessarily looking at where I'm at in my path all together, like as a whole, maybe this is just where I am today. So in this three card spread, I tend to use the, the position one here in the center as um, where my path is leading. And this is where my path is leading right now, today. This is where I'm going today. What still lies in shadow. So the nine of swords here and what will come to light. So when we look at this 
illuminated path spread, this is one that I tend to use more in the moment as a kind of today or maybe this week. It's more about the it's more about the mundane, whereas the signpost spread is kind of more of an overall spread for kind of the larger journey. This little illuminated path spread is more about today. It's more about the the journey right this moment. And so I really like this one for just kind of stepping into, okay, where am I at right now? So where my path is leading, what's still in shadow? What am I not addressing today that needs to be addressed? And what's going to come to light when I actually address that what's in the shadow and I integrate that into my path, that's what's going to come to light. And so I really like this spread just as a basic three card spread for helping me to walk my path on a daily basis. And I think this one works really beautifully for that. So that's the three main spreads that I like to use with this particular deck. Again, they are all, for the most part, inspired by the deck itself. There is a wonderful couple spreads in the guidebook that I do enjoy as well and I've used quite frequently. Um, but I tend to go to my my three spreads that I've created for this deck. And I will leave a link to a little download that you can grab a copy so that you can try these spreads out for yourself. Again, they were the signpost spread, the um, crossroads spread, which was inspired by the four of wands and the illuminated path spread. So I've pulled out the sun here to just kind of help us wrap up this video because I feel like the sun card, which is the one that does happen to be on the cover of the box and the guidebook is a perfect representation for this deck. For me, the sun card, as I mentioned, it is that kind of bridge between the higher self and lower self. It is about taking all that illumination, all that knowledge that you learn, all that energy and bringing it down and manifesting it into the real world. So for me, this really is really a card about where the magic meets the mundane. It really sums up how I go about, you know, the process of walking my path with this deck and how I use it to help me determine where I need to go, what I need to do, what do I need to work on next. And the sun card for me just really shows how it all brings it all together into this beautiful symbiosis between the mundane and the magical. And so for me, that that really just makes a wonderful um, visual representation of this deck because it is all things combined into one, all of the opposites brought in together to create one cohesive, beautiful deck that helps me to walk my personal path. Thank you for joining me today. You will find links for the decks featured here in the description box below. I hope you enjoyed this video and will join me again soon for more creative tarot for an inspired life.